But the one in the spotlight, first of all, because winning the die roll is Felix. And we are coming back with actually the winner deck of our last European YCS. The winner deck of YCS Lille was Fiendsmith, Jubel, and Felix is still relying on the strength of those Jubel cards. And when you're opening that card, that Nightmare Throne, you are off to a good start, that I can tell you. Christoph does not look too happy to see that Nightmare Throne, probably thinking, hey, if I'm going second, maybe it's going to be a not-so-combo-heavy deck, and then Spirit of Ubel gets destroyed from the deck. Ooh, and that's honestly a crazy start, because usually when they do that, when Ubel players do that, that means they're trying to set up a Phantom of Ubel, possibly before the normal summon even. Yeah, that's indeed what's happening, using both of the Ubels that we just have accessed through the throne, and Phantom of Ubel, a monster negate already on the field before even summoning any other monster. And there is the best Norman summon he could ask for there. There's the Dark Beckoning Beast. Phantom of the Jubel pro protecting every egg combo that he will, Felix will make. For sure. I mean, look at those quarter century rares, right? Dark Beckoning Beast, quarter century rare, into the opening of the Spirit Gates, also quarter century rare. Felix is uh, playing an Blinked older out. deck, but he's definitely uh, playing the newer cards here. However, the Phantom of Ubel is ultimate rare, so there's definitely a preference. So we're going to see where this combo leads us. I mean, we have seen this in the past. Ubel has shifted out of the meta at, at least a little bit. Yeah. It was extremely dominant in the however. This deck is still really, really strong. It didn't lose anything, but uh, it is just a little bit worse into Fulvalos. Yeah, for sure. That's uh, the main factor right now, that the deck is kind of struggling to set up a very, very impressive field through a resolving Mulcharmi Fulvalos. But, uh, I mean, if it does go first, and if that is not occurring, then you're still pretty good. And there is the Fiends with Trek now as well, hard drawn, which is going to search out the Lurry here, I believe. Well, that would for sure be something very, very special and new. Lurry is being added to the hand, discarded immediately, special summons itself back to the field. And can we maybe see a Requiem here? Is that a possibility? Yes. I mean, why not? <laughs> why would it not be a possibility? There it is. Fiends with Requiem. Uh, and probably that. Lacrima. Yeah, maybe. That's also a very, very good possibility. I think with that we're just going to see a full on it also looks i mean there is a trap card in the head of christopher oh and he's saying hold up wait a second i can see that there is a trap card in his hand so this might be an infinite impermanence at Possibly. which point are you going to want to use it are you going to use it on the lacrima but the engraver is already in the graveyard so i think that point has passed what are we going to throw it on Hmm, I feel like maybe on sequence isn't that bad. That could be the one we're waiting for. Also, if there possibly maybe yeah. is a Nibiru next to it in his hand, then the combination of Impermanence on the Phantom Ooh. and then the Nibiru after could be great. But it is just going to be bad. Oh, but we have the no. Shavara on hand, of course. We search that off of the Yama, meaning we can, All in right, response, yeah. destroy the sequence, meaning it will resolve here. And the Shavara <laughs> already coming to the field now as well. But we can only summon out a Fiend monster now. I mean, we we're planning that all yes. anyways, right? So <laughs> I think the Fiend's I think we are okay with this. has a few Fiends <laughs> in I would the back agree. pocket. But uh, Christoph is already laughing, shaking his head. He was like, ah, yeah, I knew that Chavara was in the hand there. Maybe I should have seen that one coming. And now Felix is just chilling, resolving his fusion there. For area, pro probably. Yeah, because um, he did have the important start of going for the Dark Beckoning Beast. But he didn't have the Norman Summon of Samsara the Lotus yet. So I feel like we are now trying to exactly through the Ariel Eater access the Samsara the Lotus, send it to the graveyard, and we haven't even used the on field effect, the second on field effect of the opening of the Spirit Gates, meaning we can just yep. bring it back here. And ooh, look at that. Easy discard. Fuvalo is such a crazy card at the moment. If you draw it first, it will not do a whole lot, but you can just use it for effects like that. This is something that decks really enjoy doing, having random discards in their combo, and then you're like, hey, I can play this card in my main deck because if I draw it going first, it's not going to be a problem. I don't have valuable discards anyways most of the time, so I'd rather just play cards that are only good going second, and then I'm able to get at least some value off of them going first. All right, we are now just searching the Nightmare Pain. No need to play around Roll Lockbird or anything anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I think that, that point card is, is probably uh, would have been activated ages ago here. You know how funny it would be? It would have been if Christoph just went, oh wait, I forgot this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, then still, we, sh we just have to fend them up on the field, so we probably just negate it. We may not even I need think, to negate I think it, at honestly. At this point, you let it resolve, right? Possibly, yeah. All right, so Felix. This has all looked very smooth, but where are we going with this now? We're linking these two off. 
Keep in mind, this has to be a fiend monster we link into. Fiend. A fiend. It is an, a fiend. Oh, a Yama. it is a second copy of Yama. That's good to see. Usually, what we saw is when people are running the double Yama package, but also means that they are more so going for the Chamber of the Unchained, but we're still seeing Escape of the Unchained here in this extra in this main deck. I really like the Chamber. Yeah, same. It's, uh, it feels like you can just play on so much more. You are not reliant on having your Unchained Link monsters left on the field. You can just play your combo further on with them, use them as extenders, and yeah. then in the next turn... No, I totally agree. For sure. reach. Ooh, look at that combination. The OG Jubal and also the Terror Incarnate next to each other in its newest rarity. This is looking beautiful. And from the previous round that we had the Exodia, now we have the original Jubal. Oh, yes. It's looking bright out here in Bologna with all those cool decks. And we will have to see whether Christoph's cool deck can actually manage to get through this because this currently uh, in our current Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame is probably one of the best decks at going first. If you will get yeah. to set up a field and goes basically uninterrupted because that impermanence didn't do a whole lot, then it will be very, very, very tough to beat. I want to say, I want to ask which deck is better at going first? Is it Yubel or is it Mermail? Would you prefer playing Mermail over Yubel at the moment? It depends, right? I think the, the going second of Mermail might be a little bit better, honestly. Uh, and on the other hand, it really depends on how the opponent's deck is lined up. Because Mermil, for example, is really, really good into decks that are playing Breakers, because it is able to just yeah. get them out of the hand before they get the chance to activate them. Uh, on the other hand, I think Yubel uh, possibly is better into the hand trap Ryans. So it's, it's kind of tough to say. They're both really good. I think we definitely are going to have both of them uh, with decent success this weekend. But we got to see. I want to say, if anything, the... Mermel variant is a bit more resilient to hand traps because uh, actually you need two hand traps to just stop the effect of Neptabis. Other than that, you can still play on and establish a pretty impressive field. Fair. There's Caesar now. However, we have seen one impermanence from Christoph and it didn't do a whole lot here. Yeah. But I mean, it was at the point where it really shouldn't have been used, I want to say, because he knew that the Shabara was coming to dodge the impermanence. I think I would have pro probably just possibly Captain try to Sarah. use the impermanence on the Dark Beckoning Beast right yeah. at the beginning, right? That's a solid call to just uh, try to do it there. If that works, usually the turn is going to be very small. I mean, they already had the Phantom on the field, meaning they at least can go into Yama, but yeah, that is not necessarily the best play there. Still done a lot. I think that maybe Probably. also there is a chance that you want to keep it. To Maybe if you have a decent hand with the engine, you can try to play it through the field. Yeah, there there is a world that is also a possibility for sure. Turn but passed. now. Christoph's turn, and is he going to show Felix what he's on? Felix so far only knows 56 cards, but there is Tour Guide of the Underworld Normal Summon, and he's probably raising his eyebrows right now as we speak. And is that going to resolve? Nope, we can just use the Caesar yeah. on it, and Caesar has the beauty of not only negating the effect, but also destroying the effect. Activating that, Lee's Christoph picking up his cards. 1-0 for Felix and his strong Jubal Fiends with deck there. Ooh, that was a classic display, right? Weiss's Leal was all of that, but now back in Weiss's Bologna as well. What are you thinking, Mike? I mean, as you spoke before, Burning Abyss were the original level 3 deck. Yeah. And we just saw Tour Guide again <laughs> after so many times. Yeah. But I believe that also Goblin Biker can make a very good board going first. Yeah, for sure. And I think that, that we have the side deck. Uh, the player can go and uh, make a very good board. And yeah, of course, hopefully. he has a lot of good choices going first. He definitely does. And uh, uh, I'm very excited to see it because, of course, there's all the Goblin Bikers. All of them are level 3. But we just saw there's multiple ways in his deck to actually get level 3 monsters onto the field. Because, of course, he wants to get to those rank freeze as well. And don't, they don't necessarily need to be Goblin Biker monsters. So they have, he's including one of my most favorite cards out of the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! universe. That's a golem. No. <laughs> He's playing punk cards, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, true. the beautiful punk cards. I love them. And apparently, Christoph also has a thing for them as he's uh, running the, the Armin's and, uh, of course, also the um, Foxy Tunes and Ogre Dance and so on. And uh, Emergency Teleport, of course. Still one of the most powerful spell cards of all time, if you ask me. But I, I want to say we've talked about Goblin Bikers a lot now, but his opponent, 
Felix did not see Goblin Bikers. He just saw Tour Guide of the Other World. Mm. You're thinking, hey, my opponent is probably going to run something spicy when you're in the featured match and you're playing yeah. Yubel here, so you don't expect to get the featured match. True, you true. see a Tour Guide, everyone loves Burning Abyss. Do you suspect that your opponent is playing Burning Abyss here? 56 card Burning Abyss would be a statement, right. but I mean, I would it's probably, Spice's Bologna, right? I would probably go for Unchained, to be honest. Oh, yeah. I think uh, Unchained doesn't really play Tour Guide anymore, though. It, it did in the beginning when the new support was released, but I think at the moment it doesn't really play Tour Guide that much anymore. Is, is it like a higher chance that your opponent is playing Goblin Bikers in round 5 of a YCS? Or is it rather Unchained with Tour Guide? Because maybe players are thinking, hey, I have a very, very spicy decklist here and I want those yeah. one-card starters. I think with 56 cards, I am leaning towards Goblin Biker, honestly. But I mean, that's going to be now the question that his opponent, Felix, has to answer yeah. because Felix is one side thing right now. And on the other end, of course, we got to ask ourselves, is it that much of a difference? Like, what cards are you going to bring in going exactly. second versus Unchained and uh, Goblin Bikers? It's probably going to be somewhat similar because, for example, I see Forbidden Droplet in the side deck. Seems like a no-brainer, honestly, against yeah. both of these decks. And then uh, there's, of course, Mulchan Perulia. <sighs> Same thing, kind of. Leo spotted the Cosmic Cyclones in the side deck as well. I mean, you can bring <laughs> those in as well, obviously, sure. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see how this one plays out because I'm ready for some level 3 and rank 3 comboing, I can tell you that. Yeah, and the duelists are ready too, I think. So let's go over to the table. My heart always skips a beat when I see a Cosmic Cyclone somewhere in Yu-Gi-Oh! I love this quick spell card. If you pay 1000 life points, you get to banish a spell or trap card. Magnificent. Would you set it in now, without knowing your opponent? Always. Es playing? Especially <laughs> when I'm not knowing the deck of my opponent, I would side as Also, if there is a chance that's unchained, I think Cosmic Cyclone makes a lot of sense. It ain't bad, but, but now Kristoff's turn it is, and he gets to oh. start this off. Let's see what he got here. Out of his 56 cards, which ones found their way into the opening hand? And, oh, the army! Let's go! And immediately the Kagabucha Knight! That's a classic one as well from back in the day. Of course, just on a normal summon, you get to special summon him from the hand. So that means immediately two level 3 monsters on the field. Oh, but oh, there wow. is a Fuvalos activated right after. I mean, I was that just insane. saying, we're trying to set up so many Exceed monsters. That's like the plan of the deck. Yeah, that is going to be costly now because every Exceed monster, and that's the first one, the big Kabonga. That's going to be a big Kabonga draw for Felix, on the other hand, with the Fuvalos resolving now. Christoph also has an emergency teleport in hand, I think, and that could have been chained to the Fuvalos true, to get a free true. body. So I think that he either forgot it or decides that he's not going to extend too far. He has Drone Lockbird and I think another hand trap in his hand. Actually, I'm not too sure about the Drone Lockbird, but I'm very sure about the other hand trap. Okay, so Drone Lockbird could actually be used uh, against the Fuvalos as well, right? Possibly. Yeah. Oh, but there's the effect Veiler as well from Felix shutting down the big Kabonga. Oh no, we're setting a card and we're passing it back over to Felix. And now we saw how much it could do uh, his Yubel deck in the first game. How good is it going to be going second now against the Big Kabonga? Because, to be fair, this Big Kabonga is now not negated yeah. anymore and is again an interruption now on the opponent's turn. But, but also, it's a bit of a liability because now you can run into it with Nightmare Pain on your field. That's true. And we're searching out the Dark Backening Beast here off of this opening of the Spirit Gates. But it is with Droll and Lockbird though. Leo, you saw it correctly, so that's a good start here for Kristoff. And I mean, the Big Kabonga kind of is only an interruption if you have another yeah. um, Goblin Biker card in your hand there, right? So that's not necessarily the case. I'm pretty sure that it isn't the case because I think it is a level 3, but a Ooh. card that you can use on your opponent's turn, but not on this card. Dark Beckoning Beast is normal, so I think we can see a Ghost Warner there. Oh, the Squirmia yeah, is being special summoned as well. This is, looks good for Felix now. It looked like a normal summon to All me, actually, time. yeah. I think we just normaled the Squirmer oh, yeah. there. It didn't activate or anything, it just Ooh. put it to the field. So the additional normal summon was used of the Dark Backening Beast. We link these two off into Moon of the Closed Heavens. So the plan seems obvious. We are trying to segment into our Fiendsmith part of the deck. And that Requiem is going to bring out Fiendsmith Engraver or Lacrima first. What are we going for? Probably Lacrima to get an extra body. Yes, there it is. Akrama is being summoned, is going to activate the effect to send the engraver from the deck to the graveyard. Or are we going to see another trap card? I do not think so. 
which it was a very, very cool tech in the Fiendsmith deck that Joshua Schmidt played in the first round. I'm still very excited to see how far those oh, decks will go. Oh, there, there it is, is, the Ghost Mourner. The Ghost Mourner on the Lacrima. Cutting off the access to Engraver is going to be kind of huge here. Yeah, for sure. And that draw on Lockport in general is also pretty good against Yulol, so I yeah. think this one might be a tough one for Felix, and Christoph can keep himself here in the game. Okay. Oh, he had Engraver already, discarding it for the opening wow. of the Spirit Gates. But, wait, wasn't draw on Lockport activated? And so, we're just we're bringing something back from the graveyard. What's oh, uh, for the spirit gates, yes, yeah, I yeah, thought the exactly. uh, effect was activated. No, 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 <laughs> it's, it's all good. The drone lockbird does not impact this. But what are we going oh, to do huge. with these two now? Engraver in the graveyard is great now, yeah. That was a really, really good bait for the mourner yeah. from uh, Felix side. And now it's uh, Felix turn to do whatever he wants. So I think uh, he got the interruptions out. Of course, drone lockbird is still a little bit of a problem for you. I think it's going to be pretty tough to access the Yubel part of your yeah. deck without uh, having the ability to search. But do you need to? That's the question, right? Also, Yama doesn't seem that valuable now anymore, not being able to search, but... But your opponent has nothing. just the sequence, yeah. Yeah, you're right. He absolutely doesn't. Sequence of fact. And you can go for an Aerial Eater. You have used the opening of the Spirit Gates already to rebound something, so that is out of the picture. You're right about that, otherwise you could have said sent the Samsara de Lotus. And the damage from Gosh Murnir. That oh, is yeah, indeed right. the case. Also, what I'm wondering, did we even activate the effect of our Zyamin? I don't think we ever oh. searched anything with our Zyamin, right? It just, it was normal summon, then the Kagemucha Knight came out, and immediately the Fuvalos were was dropped, and Krista yeah. was so confused about it, so he just actually forgot about the searching part. So that could be valuable follow-up, honestly, if there was just yeah. a Foxy tune on the hand or something. But instead, it's over to Felix now, who can use these two monsters from the graveyard. We saw that before to fusion summon out the Aerial Eater. Yep. Ah, we could go into... I think we can access the Yubel engine quite easily if we go into a Muckracker at some point. And now send Asa some, some Sarah the Lotus to the graveyard. You're right. That's true. Very much. And you have more than enough material for that. I mean, you could just summon back the Engraver from the graveyard. If there is still something that you can send back, if we haven't used it all for sequence. Okay, Felix considering this. He started out with a 3-0 record. I saw him being at table one in the last round, and then he took that draw, but it seems like he's back on track with maybe looking pretty here in round number five. And I think Christoph at this point is just happy to be there. <laughs> so he looks a little bit like he has accepted his fate. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to have fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Truly. Truly, that's what we're all here for. And also Screamer is in the grave, so yeah. Felix can just b uh, banish him and special summon one level one Fiend Monster with zero attack and defense. That deck has uh, a lot of tools, yeah. Engraver next. Engraver summons itself out by returning, I think... Yeah, we, we returned the moon. moon yeah. Oh no, the sequence, right? Oh no, the no, sequence no, the is still on the field. It was the moon, oh yeah. Absolutely. Engraver effect now. Goodbye, Gabonga. <laughs> it sounds like the name of the song. <laughs> Not the song that Christoph is singing right now, that's for sure. <laughs> Felix enjoys that jam quite well, though. And uh, interesting to see that the Aerial Eater was summoned in defense position, right? How, how much attack does the Aerial Eater have? Yep, doesn't matter. Okay, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Okay, 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 I will accept it. But I agree, every time you're going second, you summon everything in attack position, basically. Yeah. I mean, Aerial Eater was 2100, like... Yeah. Engraver plus Aerial Eater surely was more than just the Caesar now, so... I, I oh, guess we're, we were missing out on a little bit of damage. Let's see whether that's going to hurt Felix eventually. Because Christoph is going to get another turn here. Attacks Where's, coming through. I'm checking the graveyard. Where is the gruesome Graveskummer? Because gruesome I don't see it anymore. Graveskummer? You're right. It's not there. So we must have shoveled it back. Was it? Have we shoveled it back for a real eater? Yeah, maybe. Okay, it goes over to Christoph. He's checking his graveyard. Maybe now also he was looking at the, at, at the army. Maybe he just realized, oh, I could have searched with yeah. the army last turn. But we missed out on that. But we do have another card to draw. Is there a tour guide from the top? But even a tour guide into that Caesar might be problematic. Let's see. Let's find out. And if the set card is really an emergency teleport, this also does not help against the DDD Wave King Caesar. Such a powerhouse of a card. It looks like a monster. This looks like it's another psychic. Ooh, oh no. We that actually ain't that have a bad, goblin actually. Biker. Yeah, that's one of the uh, better goblin bikers. That's actually the one 
you do max out on that's goblin biker duck charger and that's a pretty decent normal summon to pick up there because uh, you could technically oh, special wow. summon it out by detaching from the opponent's uh, exceed monsters or is it only from yours oh it's only from oh no you can detach from the opponent's side as well and uh now it's is that in the fact that, that yeah okay that would be activating so i think we're just normal yeah. summoning here in that case to play around the caesar but then the normal summoning effect of course also allows you to add a goblin biker spell trap from the deck this might be one of the best top decks we could have gotten, honestly. You know what would have helped here? A uh, Goblin Biker Snatch Steal. <laughs> that would be a card that would absolutely help here. Oh, right now, we okay. just attack into the sequence. Do we not play Goblin Biker spells? We do play plenty, and I don't, I don't see any cards in his hand, right? Nope. So we just... Oh, or is there a card in his hand? It doesn't look like it. Maybe Christoph also just doesn't like searching cards. That may be also... We're What's activating it? Lacrima now. Lacrima brings back the sequins. And we're activating... Oh, no, we're just shuffling the deck. Lacrima back in. I'm really confused on why we didn't get anything with the Duck yeah. Charger, but it's just Duck Charger, 1,600 attack points, attacking all the sequins. Shortly after it came back, though. Was that maybe the Ash Blossom in the graveyard from Felix? Oh, you <laughs> solved the puzzle. You solved the puzzle there. It was the Ash Blossom. I didn't even realize I didn't it was see activated. Him discarded. Yeah. There is now emergency teleport. You gotta got try. <laughs> Caesar's there to negate it. That was clear since the beginning. We all knew about it. And engraver is again engraved. Yeah, I was gonna say, actually, now the engraver is back in the graveyard. That's a, that's a problem as well. But now Tracked is being activated by I Felix. I like kid that Felix played around the permanence and yeah. moved away from an emergency teleport column. Okay, Lurry discarded Better after the search. Yeah. Yep, always, always. So sometimes the Ubel deck struggles to close out games because you have a whole lot of monsters that have zero attack. But I think we're already set up pretty well here with the Caesar the sequence and the Lurry on the field. So I don't think we're missing much here. Yeah, honestly. I, I just don't think he's going to Ubel this game out. Because yeah. there's only 4,000 life points left, as you just said, and you can just go into to a Requiem, get the Engraver back from the graveyard, and then you should also already have the damage. Probably. Let's see whether Felix sees that. I mean, it's pretty hard not to see game here, right? We could also just go for Yama, possibly. You can, you can go for basically everything. Yeah, there is the Yama. That should probably help. Because we're getting another monster with decent 2,000 attack points. There's Shavara added to the hand. I mean, even if we just set a spell trap here, possibly, and then activate the Shavara, we could be good to go. Oh, we just bring out the Engraver? Sure, that also definitely helps. That is not the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> engraver wanted to have the feeling of being in the extra deck for what? Pendulum because all engraver. of his friends are also in the extra deck, right? All the Fiendsmith cards joining him are usually from the extra deck. Using Engraver, good by Dark Charger. That's more than 4,000 tech points on the field. In the battle phase, we are! And Felix stays undefeated, winning a 2-0 here with a 4-win and 1-draw record. I mean, this was an absolute classic, right? We, lo we love to feature the rogue decks, the really creative choice. Yeah. But sometimes it is just not enough to beat those meta decks, and the meta decks prove why they are an absolute top. That's true, absolutely. Very good display of the Jubel deck, and honestly, yeah. people are kind of sleeping on it, so I feel like it has dropped to a popularity level where it might be almost all of a sudden the underdog under the radar deck for this event. I mean, it's just one of our last YCS, which wasn't too long ago with YCS Leal, but people are just focusing on the Fire King Snake Eye stuff and so on yeah. so much, so I wouldn't be surprised if this one could still perform very well. Honest. To be honest, uh, since the release of Fugalos, yeah. uh, Ubel is indeed under the, day, under the, the radar, yeah. but I truly believe that in a good pilot, it can make its very strong uh, board, of course, going first, and break any field going second. Yeah. yeah, There are two major factors for that, that I want to support. Uh, it is going to be A, not everyone has a Fugalos, True. and B, is that people are cutting Fuvalos from their main decks. <laughs> it we, have, like it, yeah. we have seen so many decklists already that are playing Fuvalos in the side deck, uh, or if they are playing it at all. And uh, yeah, if everyone is expecting those slowish decks that can play around Fuvalos, you can just you can just throw your Jubel combo at them and they're like, oh man, I was cutting down to 12 hand trips. What am I doing here? Why is, <laughs> why is this happening? But we're actually talking about this now, have a deck breakdown to show True. you guys. And I'm very curious to see what's happening. Oh, oh. not surprised by that, but honestly, so Tempai on top, 
really, really, really clearly what was I was what I was expecting. But it's so close to the others, right? It's just like one percent more than Fire King in the second spot, and then Centurion is doing quite well there yeah. with ten percent as well. Any other surprises? Labyrinth being on there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I agree. That's uh, uh, a decent representation. With a cunning three percent, <laughs> actually, actually, I think this is not the biggest representation. It just shows how wide the meta is actually spread. If we have thirty-nine percent others and decks with three percent mention are like named, uh, named. That and is I mean, that is crazy. Are we missing anything? Is there something that we would have expected to be on here, but apparently it's just in the other category? Is there something? We have been anticipating. It's interesting to see Mermail yeah. didn't quite make it into the decks being named, but is there anything else that we might be expecting that is not on here? I'm wondering. It's pretty much, it was all on there. Plants could have been yeah. on there, but usually it's a low it's a number representation deck. <laughs> it's only five plants in the event, but they are all good. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Always. Exactly. Yeah. But besides that, it's probably all of them, right? Yeah. And of course, you know, this is YC's Bologna held in Italy. Let's see where all of our players for this event are coming from because we also have a country breakdown of all the players attending. And no surprise, Italy sitting pretty in the first place with basically making up half of the players here in our main event. Followed by two Germans. Uh, no, we just two, had two, two Germans, Germans. <laughs> yeah, sure. in the feature match. Also two Germans in the feature match booth here. Uh, but also 11% Germans in the field. I can promise you guys it's not only two Germans <laughs> because then we would have about 20 attendants of this tournament. So, so uh, stay, stay calm. France is uh, following up, UK, Switzerland, and Spain, and then, of course, also other 18%. So it is yeah. quite the diverse YCS here, but we are going to talk about the winner's deck more in detail with the winner and Marcello. Thank you, Leo. And yes, we are here with the winner, Felix. Uh, congratulations a lot. How do you feel? Uh, thank you. Uh, great. Uh, I would say pretty nervous. Uh, it's my first feature. Yeah. But uh, you thankful, did amazing. Thankful yeah. that I won that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You did absolutely amazing, and uh, yeah, still uh, I think uh, looking pretty good here in day one at Bologna. What were your expectation uh, walking into the event? Um, I actually didn't have any, to be honest. Okay. I just wanted to see how far I come, and uh, in case of doubt, uh, play side events, Edison. All right. Um, but I'm still uh, undefeated. That's great. That's great. Um, in the main event, so uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Maybe I can make the top cut. We, now that is is the goal for sure. But yeah, it's still still a bit of a long way to go. But you're uh, you're absolutely crushing it. Uh, we have mentioned uh, before that the Ubel deck was obviously doing really well back at YCS Lille, but it has changed a bit in these upcoming months. Uh, so uh, why did you bring it? Have you been playing it for a while? Uh, yeah, I've been playing it for a while, um, nice. even before uh, the Finsmith cards yeah, came yeah. out. Um, I just like the deck, and it's actually still a solid uh, tier two deck, even mm -hmm. uh, even though Fuvalos exists. Um, yes. So yeah. That's Absolutely. Why I it. So we we can go through some of the key moments I would say yeah. in this amazing future match that you can have fun memory of. So uh, looking up at the first spot, uh, I think it's more of the pressure from the future match. Uh, this yeah. is where your opponent tried to impermanence you, but probably uh, as you can see from his smile afterwards, he didn't think about the Shervara that you did search. Yeah. So usually, wh what do you think in uh, in the line? So uh, it's a great add to the deck, right? This um, additional layer, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say my line was optimally because okay. I was nervous, <laughs> um, but I actually have thought about uh, going into Yama and adding Shavara yeah. um, so that uh, Imperm doesn't hurt me. Um, yeah, then he Impermed me because he forgot, because he was nervous as well. I mean, makes sense. Um, so. Yeah, but I think it would not have mattered uh, mm -hmm. even if he did hold uh, the Imperm, seeing my end board. Yeah, and this is exactly um, the next thing yeah. that I want to bring up because this is uh, an incredible field that you were able to amass. And yeah, you passed on this. Uh, uh, your opponent uh, obviously had to stare down a lot of interruption. This is pretty much what you want to start with the, with the deck, right? Uh, yeah, I would say this is one of uh, the best uh, end boards. Of course, I have a mini and like yeah. more disruptions than my uh, opponent has cards in their hand. So 
Yeah, absolutely. Let's now my question is, uh, uh, he went for tour guide, uh, and yep. once it was negated, he picked up his cars. Uh, yep. Did you think of the Goblin Biker deck, or what were your thoughts? Um, <laughs> uh, not actually okay. of Goblin Biker, to be specific. Yeah. I thought he was on some maybe dark, maybe fiend pile right. with uh, 56 cars. Yeah, I, 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 saw, I saw the big pile yeah. when shuffling, um, so I knew he was on some uh, ghoul, let's say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I expected something with uh, Grasslux Arena, yeah. um, but not uh, Goblin Biker specifically. Okay, interesting. But while uh, this uh, game one was mostly about engine, game two, I think, uh, was more on the entrops. And uh, as we can see from the first clip, uh, you have mentioned how your deck is hurt by the Mulchami Fuvolos. Luckily, yep. this time around, you were the one using it, right? Yep. And um, yeah, your opponent was pretty much only forced to yeah, play the Vonga, and uh, the card is, uh, is definitely tough. Uh, what is your strategy to beat it specifically? What do um, you try to do? Yeah. So I think um, most of the players won't Fuvolos in draw phase yeah. um, and wait until the main phase. And Ubel has the nice mechanic that you can contact Fuse from your hand into a monster negate. So this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. And besides that, um, pray for pray. Ash Blossom <laughs> or Cold Pie. That's, uh, uh, that's always uh, nice. But uh, Mulchami Fu Wallace was not the only start of the match because uh, you also had to face a problematic one. Because as we can see, once you start uh, your turn and activate, uh, you get mapped by the Droll and Lock Bird. So what were your thoughts once that card was used? Um, yeah, I thought um, yeah, that I, didn't, uh, I wouldn't be able to build my full end board. Okay. Um, but even though uh, looking at my hand, I had some gas yeah. and extenders, uh, even fruit roll. Um, so I could at least um, make some plays. Um, and yeah, with one card in his hand remaining, I think, and the Ash Blossom in my hand, I think uh, ending on a Caesar was relatively safe. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And it did work out uh, in the end. Yep. So again, uh, no, we, you seem like, although you mentioned that you were quite nervous, you, you did yep. great. And uh, I, I don't think uh, it is by chance that you're still undefeated here in the one. So congrats on uh, your amazing run up until now. We'll wish you even better luck uh, upcoming next. So thank you for being with us. And now, guys, thank you for staying with us for round five. But now let's clear it from Ed. <laughs>